Hey there, welcome to this masterclass or maybe even a mini workshop on human design. I'm Rosalie Pleiman. I'm the founder of The Sovereign Self and The Sovereign Leader. Um, I'm a leadership coach. I'm a theta healer. And I am interested in human design. I'm not a, an official certified human design reader at all. But I like to share with you what I'm currently interested in and what I'm exploring. And human design is the thing that is now most on my mind, to be honest. Um, human design is a sort of an interesting combination between astrology. It's also just like astrology based on your birth date, your birth time and your birth place. Um, it uses planetary um, elements like uh, astrology does, but it's also based on using a lot from the I Ching um, and even the Kabbalah. So it's, you could say, sort of an integration of um, a couple of very world-renowned um, ways of understanding yourself better. And what I love about human design is that it offers us, well, you can say pretty foundational um, new way of seeing or, or, or a different way of seeing ourselves that none of these other systems offer. And of course, a system is a system and uh, we are unique people and uh, not everything will always resonate with you when you're, when you're reading your human design chart. Um, there will be things that aren't true or that you just don't recognize or all the things. And I'm, I'm not one of the, I don't want to diminish that at all. But what I do find is that human design offers us a way to see ourselves that is, well, pretty radically different, I think. Um, in my experience so far, pretty accurate and um, gives so many sort of, um, it gives you assistance on so many levels and into such depth that it's mind blowing, in my opinion. Um, it can go from very tangible, very concrete suggestions as to how to eat, where to live, um, what sort of environments you like and feel inspired by, to um, a pretty clear idea of how your energy influences other people, to uh, a pretty um, deep dive into your purpose, your reason for being here, the sort of the big why behind all your things, and, and so many things in between. So the problem, of course, with um, a system of looking at people that is so extensive is that it's so extensive. So when you see um, your human design chart for the first time, you're probably immediately, at least that was my re reaction, sort of like, oh my God, I don't understand this. This is way too much. I don't get it. Um, forget about it. Which is why I'm taking you today through only a few elements of human design. And, you know, maybe that's more than enough for you. Maybe you don't like it at all, or maybe it just sparks something in you. And maybe you feel like, oh, this is interesting for me. And then my invitation is uh, go to a qualified um, reader that speaks to you. There are many, many, many online who do readings online um, and get the extensive package and, and allow them to really explain to you how it works for you. But with this, from this mini workshop and the handout that goes with that, uh, I think you can get a little bit of an idea, a little bit of a taster as to what human design can do for you. So that's my intention for today. Um, I, as I said, I've created um, for my sovereign leader inner circle where I first did um, a human design talk like this. Um, I've created a handout and I want to share that with you guys as well. So if you want, go ahead and download the handout. Um, I'll first today now, uh, I will explain sort of the foundations of human design and what we're looking at. And then I'll walk you through the handout, uh, which you can fill in by yourself. So you can do a mini reading for yourself with the information that I'm giving you today. Okay, I'm going to share my screen. Ta -ta -da. Um, and I'm going to share 
presentation that I prepared, as I said, for my inner circle at first, but I think it can be super beneficial for so many people. Right. Human design basics. That's, that's what we're talking about here today. Oh. So as I said, human design, yeah, I think is super, super cool. And that is because um, a couple of reasons. So it combines many different ways of looking at the world, at self-development and as, at people. It's actually what I already said, right? It combines the I Ching, the astro uh, astrology systems, um, the Kabbalah. I think there are even a, a few more uh, information um, uh, uh, behind it. Um, but it also gives it an entirely new perspective that I haven't found in any of the other um, human design or um, sort of uh, people understanding systems out there, right? You can do all these, these tests and these charts and these things. Um, I think human design gives you much more and much deeper information than, than any, any other one that's out there. Um, I also like human design so much because it gives you um, a couple of new ways of seeing things that can be really, really life-changing. Um, I'm talking specifically about uh, the, uh, the energy profile that you get with human design um, that comes when I'm going to go into that a little bit later, um, that comes with basically recognition inside yourself for when you are feeling completely aligned and when you feel um, out of alignment. So I think that's a very, very practical and handy package. So this is how my energy works. And when I'm out of alignment, I will feel this. And when I'm in my alignment, so when I'm following my guidelines, this is what, I'm, what I'll be feeling. Super handy, right? Um, and then the, the other thing that I really, really like is that it offers you an inner authority to listen to when you make the major decisions in your life. So um, instead of just saying, well, listen to your gut or you should uh, follow your heart, human design gives uh, uh, differentiates between six different inner authorities, all elements, parts of our bodies. Um, it's funny because the head, the brain is actually no one's inner authority. So that's interesting, just as a side note. Um, but it's but it's much more specific as to how your gut feeling or your uh, following your heart, what it looks like and how it works. And I, I really appreciate that about human design um, because it, it allows people to tap into their intuition in a way that is um, really that really works for them instead of just being vague and, and, and generalistic. Um, and then I already mentioned, it also offers so many little practical uh, tips as to how uh, to live your life in a more aligned and easier way. Um, and then on the bigger side of tips, it, it, it also gives you uh, guidance into your purpose. And it, it shows you sort of the, the most important qualities, the most uh, defined qualities that that you came with to do your purpose with so that support you in living your purpose okay that's a lot of things that you cannot really place right now but let me show you what a body graph actually looks like so if you do when you do your human design chart and you can do that for free i'll, I'll give you a couple of resources in the handout you will get a picture that looks a little bit like this and there will be some text next to it. Um, but the, the image will be this. And what you see here is a um, clearly uh, a human uh, being, a head and a, a, their, uh, their upper body. Um, and there are nine centers that you, that you see displayed from the crown to the root. So these nine centers, they, they are aligned to the chakras, except for the fact that there is um, uh, a split in, in two of the chak chakras around this area. The sacral chakra is split into two, the spleen and the solar plexus. And the heart uh, chakra is also split into two, the will center 
and what we call the G center. So it's more or less uh, the chakras, but since I think it's about 30, 40 years ago, there was a people detected, <laughs> channeled, whatever you want to call it, a split in two of the major chakras into two new ones. And that's why the human design system has nine different centers. So it's based is this image and the definition um, is completely for, based on your birth time and your birthplace uh, and your birth date, of course. The black squares you see on this side are the position of the planets at the time of your birth. And um, on the left, the red squares are the position of the channels uh, of the planets three months prior to your birth. So we say in human design that there is this sort of uh, subconscious layer that is formed by the positions of the channel uh, of the <laughs> planets three months prior to your birth. And this in the middle is basically your um, physical and emotional system in human design terms. So based on your body graph, you are a human design type. And that is based on your energy field, your aura. You can be um, a generator. Um, there's a subcategory there, and that's called the manifesting generator. You can be a projector, you can be a manifester, or you can be a reflector. So it's actually five of them. Um, there is a whole system of human design called quantum human design, which uses... Um, I feel actually better terms. Um, a generator becomes an alchemist, a projector becomes an orchestrator, a manifestor becomes an initiator, for example. I think those terms are actually better. However, to not overly complicate things and to not um, pinpoint you too much in one specific direction, namely the quantum human design, um, and allowing you to just do your research widely across the internet, uh, I've decided to use the, the sort of the more original terms, but also the little bit more old fashioned and sometimes a little bit archaic terms that um, the, the person who first downloaded these ideas used. And that's, as you see, generator projector, manifesting generator, manifestor or reflector. So based on your type, there will be a strategy and a not self theme. So the strategy is, as I, I mentioned it already, is what you experience, uh, no, is a way of, um, is, is basically how you work with other people and how you work with information and ideas coming your way. That is the strategy. I will go into that later and explain more, but this is um, one of the super helpful things in human design. You get how, you, how your energy works, what that means for the way you approach uh, things in life. And then there's a not self theme. And the not self theme is related to that um, element that I mentioned, where you can either know when you are in alignment or when you are out of alignment. And out of alignment is what we call in human design the not self theme. This is what you do when you are your when you are not yourself, basically. Um, and as I uh, said, you have you get an inner authority. So the inner authority is based not necessarily. There's many, uh, I think nine or so different inner authorities. Six, I just said. Um, they are based on which of these centers you have colored in. Um, and there's an intricate system that defines which of those colored in um, centers will be your inner authority. Don't ask me <laughs> because I don't understand yet why and when and exactly how that is defined, but you can be sure that your inner authority is one of your colored centers in your human design chart. And it works together uh, with you, it gives you um, clarity when you are making decisions. So there's a type, your energy type, the way you, um, the energy that you bring into the world, 
there is a strategy that is an approach to how you best work with the outside world. And there's a not self theme being um, the way you feel, I would say, the way you feel when you are out of alignment, when you're doing things that are not um, right for you. And then there's the inner authority that can help you decide what is right for you. So make decisions. Let's, so just to give you an example, I would like to go through um, an example of a generator because a generator and alchemist in you speak are 70% 70, 70 of the population. So there's a fair chance that you are into, it fall into this care, uh, category. So generators, are people who have quite a lot of life force. Um, they have the capacity to make things happen. Um, the term alchemist, I, I appreciate that one because it is it shows so beautifully that generators are people who can make something out of nothing, just using their energy and their drive and their, um, their focus to bring it in. So, Generators are people who have a pretty open and sort of embracing energy. So they bring in others. So many generators might also be people who like to work with others. So when you get your human design chart, as I said, you see that body graph, but on the side or, or below, depending on where you do it, you'll find your type. And in this case, we see here, this is the uh, body graph of a pure generator. The generator element we're now talking about, and the, um, uh, this this word before the pure generator says something about their inner authority, and we get to that later. So on the screen, you will also find their strategy, and in this case, or in the case of any generator, the strategy is to respond. So that means that. Um, it's, it's literally opposite uh, the, the strategy for manifestors. Manifestors are here to initiate, generators are here to respond. So when there are things happening around them, um, that can be other people's initiatives, but it can also be reading a book or reading a, uh, watching a movie or even listening to music. They um, respond to things that happen in the outside world and make that their drive. They want to create something because they have an idea based on uh, the thing they've seen, the initiative that they read about or, or talked about, um, or something happened in a movie that sparked an idea um, where they, what they can resp respond to. Um, So this is not a mental thing. I, that is a super important element to understand. So this is not thinking things through and coming to the conclusion that it might be a good idea to do something. This is a very sort of um, primal feeling that something is right for you. So uh, it says here that it's a sacral response that lets you know if you are available to give your energy to the idea that that you see or that you read about. Um, so it's an emotional feeling. It, it happens inside your body. So um, I'd like to talk, oh yeah, okay. So as I said, um, all people have an inner authority. And for generators that can be different uh, there are different potential ways to, uh, to make decisions. This specific generator is a pure generator, meaning that they have, um, they have a gut feeling, literally. So their yes or no feeling is in their gut. And so they can quite simply ask their, themselves, if they are connected to themselves in meditation, for example, they can ask themselves, do I want to do this? And, and they get a yes or no response. So if you are um, a pure generator, it's important for you to practice 
using listening and understanding those responses from your gut. So it takes maybe a little bit of time of practicing your yes and your no, but then what you have is an amazing power to ask yourself basically any closed question that you can answer with yes of it or no and get a clear and and um, accurate response from yourself from your inner authority so there's no thinking required here and i think that may be one of the most sort of shifts in mindset that human design can create there's not so much um inner wisdom in our mind it's all in our body from because all the authorities are found inside our body or i must say through time so the themes uh this is what the genetic matrix calls this element uh, you can call it the, sometimes you will find the not self theme literally uh and um uh but this is all about what you feel when you are either aligned or when you are not aligned. So satisfaction is what generators feel when they are making their choices based on their inner authority, when they're following their inner guidance and spend their energy only on the things that are right for them. Um, but if they don't, if they get a full out of alignment because they say yes to projects that and they didn't check with their inner authority. And in the end, it might be that they, they, these projects weren't really for them to spend energy on. They get into a frustration mode. I find this personally very challenging, um, having a generator son who is not so fond of learning in the school system. Um, so if I would ask him to listen to his sacral authority, um, and ask himself yes no questions whether or not for example he would like to go to school of course he would say no um, and then um, being the mom focused on self-development and uh, authenticity yeah I'm, I'm in a bit of a, a pickle so to say so um, for adult generators it's really fun to do it this way it's really helpful because generators they do have a lot of energy and they can create wonderful things um, through their power to just make things out of nothing. But it's so easy for generators to fall into the trap of um, yeah, basically saying yes to everything, saying yes to things that aren't aligned for them, that aren't in um, congruence with their inner authority. And um, it's, it's really, I find it being a mom, uh, why I mentioned that is that it's so hard to learn your to teach your kids to do this while there are so many things that they just have to do um, and that is why probably many of us will find human design um, quite eye-opening because as as children even with a human design mom like me we probably aren't that used to using our inner authority and really listening to what it is that we want to do and that we want to bring into the world and so it's quite risky uh, to learn all these sort of learned behaviors and and that is what we call in human design conditioning there are so many things that we start doing you know basically because we have to or it's expected or our parents told us or the teacher said it or our friends think that's normal so um satisfaction and frustration are both i would call it like uh, signposts or so, something if you experience frustration as a generator it's a it's a warning sign for you to hey something is out of alignment here um where are you not not listening to your authority where can we uh, where can you adjust things so that um you will feel more satisfied because that is your natural state of being satis is satisfaction. Okay, so uh, yeah, so when you start initiating, initiating from a mental place, that is what will lead you to your uh, to your feeling of frustration. Um, yeah, a mental place or or pressure from the outside world. I would like to add. So just a little bit, I wanted to share with you um, 
about the things that you see here, the centers, the channels, and the gates. So first, in the first uh, upper area, you see um, the body graph with all white centers, um, the head, which is all about inspiration. I'm going from the top to the bottom. So the head uh, center is all about inspiration. Um, the Ashna center is about conceptualizing. So the way you um, the way you think, I would say. So these are the ideas. This is the way you think. This is the throat center, which is all about communication. The G center has a lot to do with feeling your true self. Um, the heart center, we call this most often the will center and has to do with willpower, so it's a much clearer name. The spleen is the intuitive and fear center. The sacral center here, which is defined in all generators, but not in all other types, uh, is the life force uh, center. So this is where most, this is a, a motor center, we call that. This is where lots of energy comes from. Then there is the solar plexus, which is an emotional center, um, and the root center, which is all about stress and fuel and um, uh, sort of a burst of energy. This is also a motor center, but much more, it goes in, in, in bursts, like a geyser, you know, there's those hot water geysers that, that suddenly there's water coming out and then it falls flat and maybe you never know when it will spark again. And that's the same with the root center. On the, in this uh, little image below the um, body graph, you see a close up from, um, I think this is my chart actually, um, where you see a couple of channels defined. So a channel is when two gates, let's immediately also talk about gates, um, when two gates are both activated and then there is a channel that is being activated as well. The way that I, like to explain the gates and the channels is it's basically sort of special um, uh, yeah, skills and talents that you came here with. So they're all in your body graph, everything that is, um, your body graph has everything. Some elements are white, some elements are colored, um, defined and undefined. So we call the colored elements are defined, the white elements are non-defined, undefined. That doesn't mean that you don't have certain things. When you're undefined, it's not that you, you don't have it. What it means is that you, are, um, you don't always have access to that certain energy and it's, um, you can very easily become conditioned in that area. So for example, I have an open uh, willpower center that's in my chart that is a white center, which means that I, I don't always have access readily available to, to push. Uh, and my willpower is um, dependent on people around me, things that happen in the world. It's, it's all based on outside um, input, so to say. The beauty about the undefined centers, though, is that you can learn a lot about them in the, in the course of your life, and that it will, uh, it can easily lead to being very wise about it, about being able to advise others about it as well. So your, your white centers are things that are there, but are um, more reliant on outside input, and that uh, maybe something that you're struggling a bit, a little bit more. The defined centers, the defined gates, defined channels, I would say are, are special gifts that you, you came here with that are um, supporting you in living your, um, your purpose, bringing your gifts into the world. And so um, nothing is for nothing. So any gate that you have defined is somehow supporting you in living the life that you want to live, that you came here to live. And then we have the conscious and the unconscious difference, difference in human design, and that has everything to do with um, those, 
I'm going to go back a few slides, those lines here with where all the um, planets were at the time of our birth, the black lines, and the red ones are um, three months prior to our birth. And in human design, we work with the black ones, everything that's black in your chart are things that you're probably consciously aware of. Um, everything that's red in your chart are things that you're probably not so aware of. So um, that goes for the position of the, the planets in and of itself, but also for the activated gates. So here, for example, this long red line from the gate, I think it's 48, that's something that this specific generator will probably not be so aware of yet. So probably if you, of course, if you explain it to them uh, in a human design reading, they might get it and see it, but it's something that probably for most of their lives, they haven't been aware of. While the black one here, the number 18, is probably something that they know and, and already know about themselves. Okay, so I'm going to stop sharing this presentation and um, I'm going to open for you the handout that I prepared. So this handout um, will guide you through your chart for the basics. And again, I, I'm saying this. So what I prompt you to do, what I invite you to do is first get your body graph, obviously. So I, I give you two resources where you can get a body graph for free. Um, just go there, type in the information. So if you don't have your birth time, I know that often happens, try to to get it from your parents, um, yeah, as detailed as possible. Um, but it's already in for this work that we're doing here, it hardly ever makes um, you change from one type to the other if your birth time. So it's sometimes that happens, but not often. So if you don't know it and you still want to do this, you can. But later on, if you would like to know more, you will actually need to have your birth time to have an accurate reading. Um, I do know that that uh, many readers are experienced, of course, with working without an exact birth time. So it will still be interesting. Uh, but there's a couple of things that you will not be certain about. For now, just, you know, use um, the time if you know it. And otherwise, you can fill in. What I sometimes do actually is, is fill in three times, like um, uh, 12 midnight, um, 12 afternoon, and then something like 6 p.m. or so to see the differences. And in the, uh, as I said, in the type of authority and uh, in uh, not self team and such, that won't make a difference most of the times. So step 1B, I added here, and I would like to add that for you as well. Don't freak out. Yes, it's complicated. There's so much to it. Um, but human design is not meant to be understood all in one go. Really, um, the big advice always is take it in steps, um, do the first reading, and then let it integrate and start deconditioning yourself. Start learning to work with your inner authority and your, your type before you dive in further. So don't freak out. And then in this handout, I'm just prompting you to fill in your type the strategy from comes automatically with your type, but it's all in the chart. And then the not self theme will be there as well. And then um, I'm offering um, borrowed from others descriptions of the types. So you can go in here and read a little bit. By all means, after that, search on the internet. You know, there's so many resources out there. There's so many people that give you information about the, the human design types follow someone on instagram or just you know um download a free pdf from someone who's really gotten into that um, because there's many ways of describing them i just wanted to offer you a little bit of insight before you you go out there on the internet and have to search and then step three is the authority and that is that is more unique there's um, as i said just a couple and i've summed them up here again little bit of information borrowed from someone else um, but gives you a little bit of an idea of what you're dealing with in your inner authority um, 
and then it's interesting to have a look about uh, into your defined and open centers and maybe if you want you can even go into the uh, the channels a little bit just by googling your channels your activated channels is most of the time it's just you know a couple maybe six maximum or eight maybe you have an amazing amount but still it can be interesting to see where you have those two gates with a colored line in between because those are quite special um, gifts that you come here with and it's nice to understand them from yourself also um, which channels are defined and which channels are not defined is interesting for you to understand because then you can start to see that maybe you find it hard to express your thoughts into words maybe that is because you have a, a divined ashna channel where you do the conceptualizing uh, but your throat is white and so the undivided throat is not always available. Communication isn't always available to you. Now I've included here as well uh, the not-self strategy. So what, what do people do when they have an open center and they're not really working with it? Um, so you'll find that here in the handout as well. And the percentages that you see on this image, by the way, has to do with how many people in the world have that um, open yeah so just dive into that a little bit uh, i think it goes a little bit too far to to read them out loud out loud so this is the handout it's just the foundations but as i said i think um i personally think that human design has so much to offer that i just i didn't want to let you uh, not know this about yourself so if you want, go into the handout, just look up your human design chart, follow the steps there, and you will already have this nice nugget, this parcel of information that can help you start um, actually working with yourself in a more aligned and easier, it will, be, it will give you more flow. Uh, it will make things easier. Decision making will, making will be easier. There might be more understanding for your own likes and dislikes, for your, the way you handle things um, and the way you interact with others. So I would say a huge step into um, getting to know yourself better, which is the first pillar of my sovereign self cycle, the sovereign self model is all about understanding yourself on all the different levels, really getting who you are and human design like almost no other system uh, helps us do that. I hope you enjoyed this, this mini workshop, this masterclass, and uh, I see you soon. Ciao.